So it's a new year and fresh beginnings. And after a few days of procrastination, I've decided to put my New Year's resolution into action. So in this episode, you'll see me make a start on top of the list, the Porsche 928 GT, which requires rear silk waters, repairs to the wings and doors, and then finally being prepped and put into paint. The next on the list is that beautiful and rare one owner Lotus Elite, which have decided to treat to a new interior and fresh paint before tackling that worn out suspension. And I think it deserves a little trip out, don't you? But before I tackle this huge task ahead, I think it's time I got my house in order, don't you? So I'm gonna start with some fresh gravel on the driveways, a quick tidy up, and now with that done, as always, let's get stuck in. So the first thing I'm going to address is that rear quarter panel on the sills. You'll remember in a previous episode I removed the plastic outer cover to reveal this scabby mess. And because of water ingress from the rear wheel, these are normally the first things to go. What am I always saying? Always err on the side of safety? <laughs> Come on, Gary, what are you doing here? A little bit of water, and away we go again. If you mask it off with paper, well, it's obvious it's gonna go on fire. So sometimes a little bit of improvisation is needed. I usually use a blanket and a little bit of water, when I can remember. Whenever you're grinding away, it's a no-brainer. You've got to protect the panels surrounding it. And I know this car is going to be completely repainted, but you don't want to make more work for yourself. You know what? That doesn't look too bad. A little bit of a flat down, a bit of a polish, a little bit of fiberglass to bring it back to shape. I should be able to weld this back on. <laughs> no, but seriously, joking apart, I've actually seen people do that many a time. Now, I would normally use an original panel, or at least a pattern part, but since the original panels were no longer available and a pattern part was a four-month wait, it's back to the school of improvisation. And when I'm reasonably happy, I just weld up them little splits and then it's ready to fit. You know, everywhere I look on this car, there seems to be more and more mud. And this is a perfect opportunity to get used to that new MIG welder I purchased from Artec. This new MIG 181 gives you the option of an easy setup or you can come off the easy setup 
and adjust it accordingly by the knobs. And I'm going for the easy setup. You hit the button here for your wire size, and then on the right hand side, you hit the next arrow, and that gives you your steel thickness. Let's give it a go. Set the gas around 20 CFH on the pull of the trigger. On with the mask and we're away. That's okay. So it's on with the men's gloves. Now what impresses me about this is I'm able to do continuous weld without actually distorting the panel. You know, I can understand why people rave about this particular brand. And with the machine's simplicity and ease of function, you can see why Artec are definitely way up there in terms of design and innovation. Okay. Well, that's not too bad for a first pass. Let's just check around the back. Yeah. Plenty of penetration, it's good. And even though I'm working in a confined space, I will try and get as much as possible from behind also. Dress it up till it's nice and smooth. Yeah, okay, the first bit looked a bit like Frankie's monster, but this is looking okay. Weld up any little holes left over. And I think it's really important to spray some kind of etch primer or some kind of protection straight away. You know, if you've got damp in the air, then it starts to rust almost immediately. Now, it can sometimes prove a little bit difficult when you're dealing with a panel that's rusted at the bottom. It's difficult to kind of guess the shape of what it was before. But if you look at the contours of this piece that took off the old bit, you can see it's kind of like a curve, like a lip that's being designed so that water drains off it from the inside. A little skimmer filler and a dependable darris. And then a nice thick coat of high build two pack primer, which is then flattered off when dry just to finish things off. And while that's left to set. Let's come and have a look at this Lotus. <laughs> Not exactly ideal, is it? The great British winter. Um, so as I say, I'm going to try and get my house in order. I get the Porsche on the road, uh, get it painted and finished. And also, we've been neglecting this poor little Lotus as well, since I bought it off top a few months back. I'm going to put a fuel filter on, uh, a new choke mechanism, uh, battery, get it running, drive it round a little bit, and then I've actually booked it in to get a brand new interior, a boundary car there. So um, that's something to look forward to. I've decided I'm going to get rid of the drill on, even though it's original. Uh, leather was an option at the time, so I'm going to go for nice cream leather. Have it nice and clean and spotless, new carpets inside. And now I'll put the car into paint. Make sure that arrow is pointing the right way. Cut off them brittle pipes. These are an absolute nightmare. 
You know, to be fair, the next one was so brittle, I just replaced it with a new piece of fuel line. I'm also going to fit the original fuel pump instead of this makeshift one. Well, this can wait for a bit, otherwise it's going to take the paint with it. Okay, so this is the new choke cable I've just purchased. And if you look at this, here's the old choke cable. It's basically the same. You know, they were just standard, uh, like British Leyland ones, I suppose, with what they put in Fords and everything else. Now, this piece here is already integral to the car. It's already still there. Uh, I haven't ripped it out, so this is the old choke cable. What I'm gonna do, a little bit of a cheat here, to save me, like, feeding that through and piecing it all together and, you know, one person one end and me the other end. I'm just gonna leave this tubing in there. Just gonna do this. There you go. And I'm just gonna feed this. It's slightly longer than the old one, which is great, because it gives you more, more adjustments when you're fitting it. Uh, and I'll just feed this through. It's exactly the same. It's got the locker mechanism there. So that'll save me a lot of time and a lot of work. case of persevering it's a tiny little hole and eventually when you're poking it will go through oh story of my life well that works in theory but this doesn't quite fit. I'm just not happy with that. That feels a little bit tight to me. So, off it comes again. See this little chrome bezel? Let's feed the wire back out. What I'm going to do, I'm going to fit the brand new sheath. Just tape it up carefully and attach it to the other one and carefully feed it through. Oh, fun and games. Pull it out into the engine bay. And what I'm going to have to do, do you see this cone? This is the new cone. See the way the thread's on the inside? Well, that means that the chrome bezel that finishes it off and attaches it to the dash won't be able to screw it on. So it'll look odd. So, back to the drawing board. Start again. I'm going to have to drill the original cone out so it's a little bit bigger. But I'll refit that. Yeah, feed it through carefully. There we go. Come on. And let's see. Yeah, that's much better. I'm happy with that. And you look here, just trim this wire off. I had a bit of a problem where, this is a makeshift one I've made up, because you've got like a little barrel with a bolt that goes in. There's a hole through the bolt and the wire feeds through the bolt and then it tightens up. But as always, the old brass and they just basically fall apart when you try to nip them up. Hey, how fun and games. It's like Groundhog Day, this. Out with the old battery. Oof. Where the hell's that come from? I feel like I'm on a boat. This would probably just be a little block drain hole or something. I'll tell you what, it's a good job it's fiberglass bodied. Well, this whole panel would be rotted through by now. A little poke through. There you go. Yeah, just a block drain hole. Fun and games. 
There you go. There's the culprit. Well, it's nice to see the engine still turns over after standing for, what, six months? Albeit a little bit slow, but whatever. Get a bit of oil around it. Right, let's get some paint on this sill. Make sure it's nicely protected with some under seal at the back. The plastic cover goes back on. Oh, and I forgot to explain, I've actually spot welded it here and here into the chassis like where it goes up. And remember the sill is actually covered by another plastic cover. So just push this on lightly and make sure everything lines up. Just knock it on. Take a look. Make sure this line's nice and clean. If it isn't, you can always trim it back. And the most important thing is look underneath and make sure all your bolt holes line up. Back on with the wheel. Drop the car. And it's over to the other side. gauges so fuel oil battery and temperature which will eventually warm up a little bit of a play around with that makeshift accelerator cable bracket and when it's nicely up to temperature have a little play around with the carbs i'll eventually balance these properly but my tools out in la when i'm heading out too shortly so when i come back i'll gun these in and get it running nice and smooth I just can't resist. I'm going to have to take it round the block. First time it's been out of its cage in what? Six, seven years? Yep, so as you can see, I'm absolutely delighted. Just listen to that. Let me just switch it off. Okay, it doesn't sound perfect, does it? But, you know, it's running pretty smooth. Um, remember in a, an earlier episode, I rebuilt the, the Lotto carbs, but I still haven't balanced them. Now, my balancing tool is still out in LA, which I'm going to shortly. So I'll bring that back with me. I can balance these carbs so everything's running nice and smooth and responsive. And I was just blown away by the brakes. The brakes were spot on. Um, it starts on the button, as you can see.
Uh, I've got a few little bits and bobs to do before I take it in for this interior, but you know, I checked the cam belt. That's nice and clean and looks brand new. Looks like it's been fitted and the car's never run. Uh, sometimes they deteriorate over time, you know, if they've been sitting in the garage for a few years, but that's spot on. There's no splits, there's no marks. It's it's like a brand new a brand new belt. But yeah, I'm absolutely delighted. It starts on the button, it runs, it stops. What more do you want? I'm delighted. Thank you for watching this episode of Classic Obsession. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you all next time.